Let's run that back one more time. So I'm changing my thumbnail, please. Too much Epo. And I'm gonna speak to William says. Me and Mama on a mission. We ain't have a proper mission. Back and forth, back in the kitchen. We was trying to whip the chicken. The streets turn cold. Let me see how it looks. What Gucci got going on? I had to do it on my own. I had to do it for the phone. I did it for my home. Why do it? I did it for my broskies. In and out jail. Why? Do it for the low skis. Yes, that's true. Selling for a 40. Mm hmm. It's not showing up on my YouTube though. So it's actually not showing me on my Give me one second. Huh? My homepage doesn't show that I'm live. That's low key trash. That's so good. What else? We do it for mama. We do it for mama. We do it for mama. Cause Gucci got cloned. DJ Georgie Porgy's in the building. Cannibal Convicts in the building. Let's get the Studio One rocking and popping. Pop locked and dropped it. I know my YouTube crowd's way different than my Discord and Twitch crowd. You guys be wilding. Like, yo, MG, you're still alive. I told you I hit those notifications on Twitter, man. Live YouTube trap. Let's make a trap beat real quick. J Hub, what's good? Jayon. Hey, I haven't seen Jayon in a year, bro. I know Jayon got like five kids since last time I talked to him. Mm. Let's bring Electra in the mix. I haven't made a beat in like days, so I'm gonna be a bit rusty. I'm gonna tell you that off front. I just got back home from the. I don't know you can read the shirt. I don't think you can read my shirt in that little ass window. Well, let's load up Slimy Air.
do a really simple beat like those all the cool kids be doing. They do one bar melodies. Uh, I could do that too. It's too fast. Let's slow it down a little bit. Try to catch it. I never catch it on this. Don't try that now. Jayon's in the building. No, you haven't been around. Stop running. B. Daniels, what's good, bro? MDM, I've been on fire. Uh, it's been a week though, bro. Well, four days, five days. McKinney's in the building. <laughs> Rebels trying to gamble it all. Nothing happened to Twitch. I'll still be on Twitch. I'm live. Well, you missed. I guess you missed the intro. Never mind. Just rewind it. On YouTube, you can rewind it. You'll catch my little antidote. I just wanted to see if this works still. I have plans and ambitions. I keep getting questions on YouTube about this. People are like, yo, MG, I would love to see you check out FAW Circle Sublab. Uh, I would love to see your full review on this. I'm like, ha, 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 ha. nope. I would love to see you on Twitch. You would have saw me use it for a whole week. Stay woke. All right, let's do it like that right now. Let's bring out the Zaytoven kit because that's what they're still using, even in the middle of the summer of 2019. Glido, Portamento, El Glido, El Slido. Let's bring our 808s in. Let's send us the chord track. Chord track's gonna have no idea what I played. Yeah, I knew that. Um, mm, I could probably play this one by hand. Why am I playing? Let's get all game staging L properties straight. Negative six, we got it like that, straight up. I wanna do that slide so bad, but I never catch the, you can't quantize it or it just sounds tacky. <laughs> it started at the end of the joint. Really? Yo, stop playing Studio One. Sounds. 
Slamier, Slamier, Slamier. Det är de bästa. I figure this out by ear. I ain't got time. That sounded rushed. Ah, you suck. It's always when I play more than one key at once, like right there. It's always off. I don't. Up through your phone, Jeff. Let's make sure y'all can hear that. And before I do the lead, I'm gonna do the drums. Hey, money, that something ain't funny. I'm a hit on up and down and down. It's like a hey, Jesus.
time. Keep it going.
cool parts. I can only do it here. Dun 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 What's good, Dollar Bill? What's good? Benjamin, hey, DJ Georgie Poirier. <sighs> Feeding the scavengers. You gotta rewind the video, guys. I explained this already. Shout to my brother Trevor. Hey, OMG, you wanna come on out here? <laughs> you see big booty girls twerking? Facts. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> what are y'all talking about? Everybody relax. <laughs> it's not that serious. This is the same Zaytoven kid everyone's using. I just figured I'd join the party. I've been telling you guys this for a long time. That's how long I've been saying it. I was just tired of saying it, so I'm just doing it now. You start to go crazy if you don't listen to your intuition. You should trust your intuition. It's usually right. Oh, let's make a drum bus and mute it. Sub lab. It's cool enough to be its own bus. Let's identify these sounds. Pads. That's a bell. That's a flute. Those are going to be panned opposite of each other. And this is an arpeggio. And then we're going to bust that too. Bust it down, Tatiana. Bust it down, and check. Pick it up, bet, bust it down. Okay. The keys, bus. Put a browser back on notice. Right, 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 right. Peep game, peep game. I'll select all my instrument tracks. Bong, bong. Go to effects and um, drag and draw Neutron 3 on all of them. All of these suckers. 
Hurry up. Speedy, Speedy Gonzalez. I need Necesito. Orale, orale. Arita, we. Come on. Let's go. And then um, we're going to put the visual mixer on the instrument bus. What is that joint called? Isotope visual mixer? Just on my bus. Just on my bus. That's all I needed on. Nothing else. Nice. What is my focus? My flute, I guess. Everything should be musical. Killed it. It killed it. The arp, though. I'm missing the pad, right? Let's throw this bass out. starts which is here that's going to be a hook drop type thingy we'll have the base there as our marker for greatness that's a four bar six bar all the cool kids skip this because that's a bridge i don't know why they're doing that but when in rome do what the romans do bong bong okay all these instruments go together um, the beginning, not so much. The beginning, we hit him with that flute magic. That's our motif for this track. And let's see what happens.
What is the main track? Something like that. The flute is El Hoco streamer. random effects in there because without them the beat is kind of boring let's do with that crash that splash and that reverse symbol bro i think uh, zaytoven used all the old rolling ones anyway so we don't have to search high and low for this setup i'm gonna put it on every uh Four bars every time the beat changes. Dun 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 dun. dun. Okay.
happen. Toleration in the dance ring. No, nothing's happening. Everyone was gone this weekend. <laughs> I'm just working right now. You guys asking about everything else but the moment. Y'all gotta get on your Taoism. Live in the moment. Live in the moment. Vintage verb. Rooms. Give me a room. Large wood room. Pause. What? stuff like the EDM be using the trap stuff. Necesito el even.
finish. MG the Christmas album. Lo-Fi Christmas. That would actually be pretty dope. It needs that Twister effect. Verbal Agenda. You need that blocked effect. Where's my moderator? Put the inserts in it. Put the risers in it. No, I got the... Uh, I got that turn the page MTV generator effects. Sound like an early Gucci Man style beat? Yeah. I mean... I think that's the objective. When you use the Zaytoven kit at least. That's why all of them sound like they're like children of uh, Gucci Man, you know, like Lil Keed, Young Thug, Future. Basically, any artist from Atlanta is an offshoot of Gucci Man. Any of the mainstream ones, I should say. There's rappers, you know, we got like outcasts and stuff in Atlanta. We got people who spit in Atlanta, but you know what I mean. When they use this kind of sounds, it's definitely an offshoot of Gucci Man. It's to keep his legacy alive. Because of how much attention he's brought to those areas. And how much positivity he brought in terms of dreaming and hoping and making a way out of music. So it makes sense. He's like their Gandhi. And a lot of people like these beats. A lot of people buy them on YouTube and stuff. But y'all want to make struggle beats with samples, so I ain't gonna fight you. I want to tell you, the people who act like they're the best producers on the internet are using this drum kit. And I think you should wake up to that fact. And the fact that none of you are challenging them on this fact is even more alarming. Back when I used to make stuff on the forums and stuff, we'd challenge each other all the time. You guys just let these weirdos talk. But, oh my God, he has so many followers. I think he's right. And then you'd be like, oh, they have their own sound. I'm like, oh, they're all using the Zaytoven drum. So that's their own sound now. That's what we mean. It's opposite day on the internet. Not in my book. I call it how I see it. That's really what it is, right? You get a bunch of weirdos to get some interview time. And they tell they talk to you about how they stole this technique off of YouTube producers tutorial. And then, you know, they get a placement where they don't get paid. And if they're lucky, their names get in the credits. And they act like, you know, they bought their moms a house and they have it. And then they become the trendsetters because people are more concerned about the trophy than they are the actual sound of the music. And you can fight that as much as you want, but nothing is going to change. So, what do they used to say in the Little Rascals? If you can't beat them, join them. Well, you join them. Well, if you do make that choice to join them, at least be better than them. And um, make this as effortless and painless process as possible. Like I do. Like, I don't care. Like, you know, I, I love using four chords. But for this sake, uh, who cares? You know why? Because the people who made this popular don't care either. Either that's by, you know, trade or by default. Or they don't know how to do better. Whatever. I don't care. I don't judge anymore. I just, I just go with it. Like, oh, you guys are using one bar melodies? Okay, I use one bar melodies. And people were like, we've seen these conversations. We talked about it. People, you know, racking their brains around all these melodies. I'm like, there's no melody. It's three notes of a chord going one. It's like Pharaoh Jaca. Pharaoh Jaca. Pharaoh Jaca. Remember? Just think of that whole Pharaoh Jaca song and just loop the intro. That's what they're doing. And people are like, oh, my God. Uh, this shit is like next level, man, because some white dude on the Internet's doing it. Like, yeah, you guys are celebrating the white kids. You guys aren't really celebrating the music part. And that's cool. Because I appreciate more cultures coming in. But let's keep it real. Let's keep it fucking real. MG's been doing this 772 days. But yeah, it's not about me. Let's go. Hey. Uh, I know you guys are wondering how, why I said it like that. I said it like that because I lost my YouTube streaming capability because of a little white kid on the internet. Y'all remember that saga? Uh, do I know my password? Probably not. Let's master it. <laughs> A little white kid by the name of Dennis. He uh, reported me because I used one of his royalty free loops in a stream. And although that was an asinine charge, I took it like Oakley. I was like, ah, whatever. I need to get my Twitch popping anyway. Uh, Twitch pays you more, actually. You stay woke. But um, today was the first day I got it back. I know my brother Drizzle was asking me earlier. And I was just reflecting on the fact of how that happens and why that happens. And um, it was a beat market down the chats Gucci man it's very dark skinned black oriented music and the producers are usually very dark skinned black oriented people with certain stories and certain backgrounds and certain 
things you can't fake or certain things you can't download. But then when you look at the representation online, it's not that, you know, it's everything else. It's everything else is not represented. And um, if you let that type of energy control the narrative, you lose it. And um, but people don't get why it doesn't change. It do, it's it's kind of like a, oh man, I'm trying to think of other industries this has happened to. I know graphics, the graphics community, the art community, those people talk about it, been talking about it for years, you know, ever since everyone was cracking Adobe Cloud, you know, they have that problem. So they're... Their, their hacking of Adobe products is equivalent to our hacking of FL Studio and the personalities and the type of hustles that are born out of that. Um, we're not in the hustle age no more, though. We're in the fake it till you make it social media ribbon age, which is transcends the cost of entry. Now it's more of a personality thing. And you're going to notice uh, <laughs> the self-destruction of this particular paradigm we're in because of these personalities. And I'm just enjoying it. I'm basking in it. So I'm teaching the sounds to use and the drums to use and how to make your own Gucci Man beats in 15 minutes if you wish and just burn the whole thing down. And maybe we'll have a chance at something better. Until then though, YOLO, YOLOSKI. I'm 607 says, yeah, that whole situation did uh, drive me to figure out how to do things on my own. So it was a blessing in disguise. Not for nothing though, I've been low key bat signaling. I was going to Twitch for a minute. I mean, I did this whole thing on Instagram Live with CMP a couple months ago, leading up to these events in March, February, and um, someone had screen recorded and shared it on Twitter, and I had responses, and I was like, why are you sharing this on Twitter? Like, this wasn't for everybody. This is for the 30 people watching. And then he took it down, and he hasn't talked to me since then, because I guess he didn't understand the gravitas of brainstorming with like-minded people and how that's not for everybody. Um, and then, yeah, you know, I kind of spoke it into existence. So I'm not even mad at it. I'm just, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back and I'll use it. I'll use this platform when I need it. But as 607 was pointing out is that I haven't really needed the YouTube platform. Not for nothing. I've been using the YouTube platform for my reviews. Um, because most people know MG The Future as the review guy. So when there's a new dope plugin that's AI catered or something that I think will, uh, greatly improve your workflow in terms of time. Um, I've taken the patience to run with that. But generally speaking, uh, um, especially since it's like my third year on YouTube or just my third year being a content creator in a consistent manner, manner I've learned how to uh, scale myself. I've learned how to check the pulse and the average of what I can expect when I do something. And you can only do that once you get data after doing something for a time. And I used to think it's like, you know, the more numbers, the better, or the more people, the better. And I've actually experienced something much different. It's actually um, not true. Maybe maybe for someone like Andrew Wang or somebody like that, where it appears that they have an organic following, but at those numbers at that scale, the kind of, the kind of mind tricks and psychology that goes into staying yourself and not be able to interact with people because you literally can't and all that, that all that shit's cool, but it's not cool for me. I'm an interactive person. I'd rather have my small circle of people that I can actually answer questions or that I can actually talk to or that I can actually show up in a public space online and not feel harassed about a bunch of pick me's or check this out or listen to this. I'd rather everything be calm, cool, and collected like it's been calm, cool, and collected. That's why Twitch is great. Because Twitch has a, a, a this barrier. A lot of people don't want to download it. A lot of people pretend like they don't understand how it works. It works just like YouTube. And um, because of that, it filters out your people. So you get your subscribers. You get your social media people, you get your Discord people, and then you get Twitch people. And each time it's kind of like a Brita water filter. You're filtering through the rocks, the kind of people who really fuck with you. And then these past few months, I really got to see on a personal level who really fucks with me versus people who just like the content versus the people who kind of treat it like cable TV, you know, what's on ESPN, what's on ESPN2. And, you know, I just happen to be one of those channels, but the people who really fuck with you, that's what I've been able to filter and um, be able to profile. Now that I know what, what that profile is, and I understand which part of that profile is actually me being reflected through people who come closest to me. Um, I've been able to be more effective, at least up here, at least in this space. I don't, I don't, I don't sweat shit as much as like I know what they, I know what they expect. They know what I'm about. You know, that's my tagline, right? Like, is MG? You know what I'm about? It's kind of like a joke. It's kind of a double entendre too. But because part 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 of you do and part of you don't, and part of the times I do and part of the times I have no idea what I'm about. You know what I mean? So that's why that's such a catchy line. It's MG, you know what I'm about. And if you never met me, you'd be like, what is he about? It begs to question. Um, 
So, you know, a lot of cool stuff. If you haven't been keeping up with me, you, you didn't get filtered through the rocks, but I appreciate you nonetheless. I appreciate all my YouTube subscribers because not for nothing, unlike other personalities or situations with other people, I never took YouTube for granted. I, I think YouTube is um, the number one catalyst for me to stay in the production game in the age that I'm in um, because this is a young man's game like anything else, right? You, you see the list. You see the people that people talk about. It's a young man's game, and there's nothing wrong with that. But... Uh, it's enough for people my age, too. There's enough for us, so I appreciate you two for that. I, I appreciate for that. But what ends up happening is it starts turning into, like, once you get, if you can get past people copying you and copying your content and you think you're going to do a dope plug-in review and then someone undercuts you and they do it first. And once you get past just those human elements with co-creators or people on your same tier, once you can muscle through that and be okay with it, then it comes down to... Um, it defaults into something different. It's like, why am I doing it? Like, when you start, you know why you do it. You you, you want to create content. You want to share with the world. You want to see if you can build a following. And you want to see if you can use alchemy to transmute that into something better for yourself. And then when the reality shows up of what that those transmutations may, may be, you always have to make decisions. Like, I could have made decisions to run SM Zeus early. Like, I knew about, we knew about SM Zeus since last year, bro. Like, and it's so cheap. I could have been ran the numbers up on the board. But as you've seen, some personality said that YouTube won't send them plaques no more on the basis of copyright. I honestly think it's on the basis of fake subscribers for a lot of people. Um, or you'll see things like people get astronomical amount of views on something and it doesn't match the average of their channel in general. Um, I've, I, Because I'm a pattern-oriented person, I wouldn't know how to flip it and fin finesse it. But why does a person do that? Why do the numbers mean anything, right? And, and the reason why people think numbers mean something because they think that equates to popularity or a check, and it doesn't. Not with YouTube, at least. Not not in this particular uh, incarnation of what YouTube is doing with that algorithm of cleaning up the SM Zeus stuff. Uh, but maybe next season would be better if we had those numbers. But this current season doesn't make a difference. We're all averaging the same monthly payout that you've been averaging for the past year. I think they're kind of comping it. But um. Regardless of those facts, you still got to think like, all right, well, this company wants me to review this plugin for no reason at all. And you start getting baited into looking at things and software and plugins that maybe not help your workflow at all. And I've always been good about avoiding that. That's why a lot of people are like, hey, why don't you do the Circle Labs review? It's like, well, not for nothing, I bought Circle Labs like the day it came out. And then when I bought it, I saw Mr. Different posting it on Instagram. I was like, oh, he got it. I ain't got to worry about doing no videos. Then I was like, this is so cool. I'm going to keep it to myself. And then after I ran it on Twitch, I randomly got an email from the developers of Circle Labs, and they were talking to me like, uh, like I don't got it. Like, yo, would you mind checking this out? And I was like, oh, by the way, I've been checking it out. I've had it for the past week on my Twitch. And I said, someone must have told you about me, or you may have seen something I've done with another company coming across an urban demographic person who could bring light to an 808 plugin for our demographic. And, you know, we went back and forth and you get into a weird space where you kind of appreciate that people start to recognize you. But then you start to appreciate that they re they recognize you because of a demographic issue and you become more of like a, a speck on a chart. It, and it gets, it gets really weird and gets really messy. And you got to be very careful with that because you can lose yourself. You, you just become you just become an arm of a bigger machine if you're not careful. Um, and, and, and that's whether it's YouTube or whether that's just being in the music industry. I'm certain you can just become an extension of something else and a lot of people don't have the headspace to be like oh it's me i'm important and me i i clear all that shit out i'm like i ain't shit like i'm good at what i do to some extent because of the time and consistency i put into it but i'm no more special than a person who's also done that so with that being said i try not to have an ego about what i do but i try to stay real like it's so important man i can't i can't put it in the better words you got to stay real um, Cause this shit, you will lose your shit. You, it'll tempt you to do dumb shit, and then you'll forget why you did it. So stay woke. Tina. Shane, everyone missed the intro again. I'm not doing that again, guys. Snow Barnes was good. No. It's a whole 
Old Spicy Monday. <laughs> bro, bro said he coming on Monday. He's like, yeah, I woke up. Where's Spicy Monday at? Nah, CMP hung out with his dad, man. You know how rare it is for people to get a chance to get some quality time with their fathers, man? Us talking about DJ Penguin's hairline ain't going, ain't worth, ain't worth skipping this holiday. This, this holiday ain't worth skipping. Oh, Lander killed that. But yeah, that's the kind of time I've been on. so funny bro because <laughs> I don't think people be hearing me <laughs> I want to make sure y'all hear me so y'all don't waste this time and get to that carrot that you're trying to get to listen <laughs> you can make any beat you want just don't listen to me if you're the type of person listen listen carefully if you're the type of person that wants to just do what you want I am not for you so I'm very unapologetic when I tell you I am not about that quirky creativity crutch bullshit that people be talking about bro everybody wants to feel like they can be in their own pocket and have their own shit and it's not true you only get your own pocket and recognition in your own shit is when you start making money the end there's no difference or separation between a man who made beats when Timbaland started and when and then Timbaland when he popped off the difference is Timbaland popped off and the man that worked as hard as him did not so that whole he's hot because he has his own sound is bullshit he's hot because he's on hot projects with hot artists bankrolled by hot record labels, bankrolled by radio, bankrolled by live performances and everything else. People are like attracted to light, just like flies and insects are. So as long as you can have the money or resources or clout to turn the light on, the flies will come. And that's why they say someone like Michael Jackson failed. Yeah, he sold 40 million records, but how many people on earth, right? There's 6 billion to 8 billion people here. He only sold 40 million records. He's an absolute failure if you look at the numbers of people who consume music. But in, rec in, in relation to the light, that's a big ass fucking light. It's 40 million, right? So it's the same thing with everyone else. So like when people say things like, ah, oh, Timberland has his own sound. No, Timberland had access to the same sample CDs. Ah, oh, Pharrell and Neptune's had their own sound. No, they had access to the Roland XV5080 and the Quartz, right? And, and all the, drum, the top 101 drum breaks that they reinterpolated with the default emu and fucking Korg sounds. And they replayed them, literally, in a literal sense. And he did it recently on Stir Fry. When he did the Mohawk break. And you can hear it clearly with track pattern this time. But it's the same thing. He's been doing that same formula forever. He's in lost of trouble because he's been interpolating other music that he grew up on his whole life. So like when people say like I want my own sound like them. I was like they don't have it. Timberland definitely doesn't have it. Uh, uh, Zaytoven, all of them, they don't even have it. They all sound like each other. So what are you actually looking for? Like that's the thing because people are honest. People want their success. So you don't want their set. You don't want their own sound. It's like saying you're looking at a girl, she's cute, and you want her belt buckle. Like what the hell are you talking about? Like stop it. Say what you really want. Man up. Like like own it. Like yeah, I want people to fuck with me. Like they fuck with this person over there. I want I want to be on the same artist everyone else on. I want my shit to be on radio. Like, why is everyone ashamed of success? Like, it's it's a weird thing. It's like it's almost like a mental health issue. It's like if you don't have a good self-esteem about yourself, you put your bar really low that you don't think you could be like these things, so you look at for a trophy somewhere else. And I'm saying don't do that. And if you do, don't listen to me because I'm not the type of person that's going to walk you through that shit. Nah, I want to be better than Kanye West. Like, in terms of sampling and stuff, the NPC, SP, whatever, Zoom, whatever, fuck. Nah, I could sample on all of them now. Like, fuck that. Like, give me him the same sample. It's not going to be much of a big difference. 
And that depends on what kind of AI drums I'm running that day, right? So, like, nah. And then you find out he got, like, 10 people in the studio doing shit, and it sounds like there's three sounds in the beat. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? So, like, when you get through that, you really start to think about, like, you're, you're dissecting what you're supposed to dissect. You're dissecting the music that's put in front of you. Some of you are lucky, though. Some of you are eclectic and get to hear the weird stuff and the stuff that actually sounds good and musical. But if you run it through the same AI, you'll find it matches, too. I've done it. I've done it enough to know that nothing's original. And, and we're, we're encountering a part in our society, which is going to be really weird. When you start uploading stuff, it's going to start matching it. And when that starts to happen, you're gonna have, your mind's going to be blown because you're going to have to start getting clearances for shit that you didn't never, ever heard because of the similarities are so ingrained into the collective subconscious of music. There's only but so many combinations you could fit into these 16 bar rhythms, guys. Like, there's only so much you could do with four chords. Like, it's only a circle of fifths with 12 keys on it. Like, goddamn, like, what are y'all trying to figure out? What is there to figure out? Like, if the people winning figured it out and that formula is being reused, you should find that formula and reuse it. Why? Because you're not selling your beat to Jay-Z anyway. You're selling your beat to MC909 Bob on Xbox fucking Live who has, 20, has a 20 spot. You think he want to rhyme on some struggle shit or he want to rhyme on some shit that make him sound like Migos? Like, y'all got to get into the psychology of what we're doing in the marketplace. I'm not talking about what you do when you're, you do the shit, whatever you want to do at home. I'm talking about in the marketplace. Like, you think these kids get up here and they want to rap and sound like Scarface? Like, are you serious? Like, in what universe is that? Not in ours. Not in the collective consciousness that you look at called Twitter. It doesn't happen. It, it's not going to. And that's not to. And that's not to say our legends aren't legends and those lyricists aren't lyricists and that music's not good music. I'm just saying that's not the kind of time we're on right now. Just like right now, <laughs> if you, you, they do it with your cars. You got to pass inspection. Yeah, of course you can buy an old car and fix a car and get a bug and put any kind of carburetor and system and engine in it you want to until you fucking go to inspection. When you go to inspection, you better make sure you have this, this, that, and the third checked off. If you don't, it doesn't pass an inspection. You don't get your fucking tags and you're illegal if you're driving. That's how a lot of you guys are doing with your fucking music. You're riding around illegal. And I don't understand it. Pass fucking inspection. Like, think about it. Like, put some put some thought into how you pass inspection. Like, if someone went to your artist profile, your BeatStars page, God forbid you got one of those. But if you got one, because it's available, and <laughs> and they listen to your shit, are you going to pass inspection? Like, that's a word. That's like, a, that's like, like I feel like T.D. Jakes right now. Like, are you passing inspection? Like, <laughs> are you the type of person that, that, that's not trying to do 808s and they just released a whole new VST that's dedicated to making sure your 808s are hitting perfect and you don't want to use it because you want to figure out how to play bass lines? Fuck for what? You're not going to be not or evil. It's not going to happen. They're cool and all, but that's not what's on. Migos is not, no. no they're selling beats on Instagram. Relax. Why do you want to do that? You, you should aim to be past inspection and then find your own thing. The, the problem is when people don't pass inspection and they ride around dirty all the time, they got to drive at weird hours, like 3 o'clock in the morning. And they start making this 3 a.m. type beats. <laughs> and you become delusional. You get sleepy. And you, and you forget that there's a game being played and you're not playing it. And you're not playing it by default. And I think that's really fucked up because if you zoned in three to six months on passing inspection and really making the shit that people want to hear... And being better at it, <laughs> I believe your chances would skyrocket because every fucking time a new artist comes out, whether it's the the baby just came out, what he got Jets Jetson made the beat or whatever, Jesse on the beat or Jetson on the beat or whatever, fucking fucking whoever on the beat, everybody's on the beat now. Mike Will's on the beat, you know, whoever's on the beat. You listen to them, they're all Zaytoven clones. If when I told y'all that shit two years ago, when that Zaytoven kit first hit Spice, and I said everyone is using these drums. Left, right, A, B, A, B, start. I, I gave you the fucking Contra code for it two years ago. I remember. I remember talking about this video I did. I've, I've done several times. And, and I said it very clearly. And if you take that and you match that trajectory of when I said it and how much time you had to figure out how to use them your damn self, and then you match it to all the releases that have come out in the past six months, you're going to see that everyone did exactly what I said they were going to do. That, that you hear. Even on the struggle uh, big old freak type beats, on the, on the struggle New Orleans bounce type beats. When I did the Manny Fresh tutorial, I said the same thing. Like they're using that same breakdown. Bam, bam, bam. With the crashes on it, at the end of every eight bars. Are they not? They are. Like I've called it over and over again. So that's why I'm a little bit more passionate about it because we have time behind us. And you can go back to my old videos and speed up and go, yeah, he was right. Fucking, I'm fucking smoking mids out here. But yeah, of course you are. But my gift. <laughs> That's my gift to you, right? <laughs> oh man. Y'all see it. Y'all see it eventually. Whatever. We'll catch the next one.
<laughs> we'll catch the next one. We'll, we'll, I will give you guys one more chance. <laughs> Did he give me one more chance? Nah, that shit ain't coming back either. <laughs> Pass the inspection. Hashtag Rebel Agenda. Hey. I don't know, man. DJ MVP's in the building. Shane's in the building. Mika Moon. I see y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Mate said I'm a unique snowflake though. <laughs> Shane said not this again. Uh, uh, Mr. Differ says, what's your take on Lander versus Distro Kid in terms of distribution? Lander, remember, both services, um, your song only exists on the distribution service in, per in parallel to you paying for it. So like, if you get Lander for mastering, and you cancel it because you're not mastering no more, but your distribution is connected to that price and you have to drop it down, you have to be extra mindful of how much it costs to keep your tracks up there. So I think you have to drop it down from mastering to unlimited distribution, which is like $6 a month, which means is if I'm correct, because I'm just guessing now, if unlimited distribution is $6 a month, then for Lander to distribute your songs onto Spotify or iTunes, you're spending about, what, $72 a year for unlimited distribution? Um, and distro kits twenty dollars a year, and then sometimes people have discount codes. You pay even less the first year. It could be anywhere from fourteen ninety nine to nineteen ninety nine a year, versus Lander's tiered system, which can get kind of expensive. I think you know on the cheap side is like a couple of songs for a dollar a month or something, which is twelve dollars a year. But no one does it. Everyone goes for unlimited. So um, watch that unlimited price and then scale it times twelve. And when you scale it times twelve, it's more expensive than distro kit. Um, however, the Lander pipeline with it built into mastering to distribution, the plus one on that is the mastering price. So if you're paying for the mastering service and the distribution is tucked into it, um, it's worth it on that angle, but you're paying that forever. So you're, you're going to pay for that to keep your tracks up there as long as you want your tracks up there. So you got to be very mindful of that. So in my mind, the way I did it was like the ideal person that that would work for is a person who's working at home, like... You have a studio, a project studio, and you're recording people, and you're doing these collabs with people, and you're doing the splits and stuff, and you're able to feature and publish everyone, and it's paid for itself because you're charging for studio time and you're charging for beats, and then you're the go-to to get everyone's shit on iTunes and Spotify. I would keep Lander for that because I'm like, oh, let me take this struggle freestyle you did. Let's throw it on Lander. Let's distribute it. Let's put our splits on it and be done with it. And I don't know if Lander does splits. That's another thing. I'm saying that casually. I'm not sure that Lander has a split sheet um, in terms of automatic payment from the royalties from streaming specifically. I didn't see that, but I didn't go to that last page yet either. But it may be there. If it's not, oh no, distro kit all the way. Because I don't want to have to like, even if there's a spot for artists and producer and all this stuff, um, sometimes you can split things with people who are not part of it. And I like that about distro kit. Distro kit just has teams. It was like, it's 100% of the record. You get 10%, you get 10%, you get 80%. In fact, one of my uh, my online protégés, Jelani, he uh, he put out his first song through DistroKid, and he gave me 10% off cut. So I'm not a producer, I'm not a writer. I'm not listed there at any formality. But when it comes with the mechanicals, the way they split it now with teams, he split it 10% with me, irregardless, right? So I like DistroKid for that reason. I like it because it's $20 a year, period. It's a 20 spot. You know, you smoking mids anyway. You got 20 spots, so... That's that. Mastering, on the other hand, you know, they're, it's, they're not even comparable. Adam says, what? Yo, you trying to tell me I want to make pasta, I can't use soybeans, but I want my beats to be gluten-free. No, I'm telling you, if you want to do that, don't, don't watch me. Because I'm not out here trying to get people to be in the struggle Olympics. I'm trying to get people out here to win, bro. Like, y'all let Jetson beat y'all? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 Yo, murder, murder on the beat don't even do 808s, bro. Like, is whatever, whatever. It don't matter. It don't matter. But it, but it's kind of low key matters. <laughs> it matters a lot. <laughs> Yo, you guys got, y'all got the head. Like, people don't even know how to use spice yet. You know what I'm saying? There's people out there who don't know about royalty free loops yet. There's people out there who don't know that uh, there's levels because you know the old heads aren't on the tiers. So they don't get the same kind of information. Not everyone is teaching the same thing. And there's an age gap. And a lot of people can't teach the same thing because they haven't experienced it. And because of that, a lot of you who watch us have the advantage. 
and you just have to tap into it and use it, bro. And that's the hardest thing to tell a person. You can't tell nobody what to do. But you can say, yo, I strongly advise. <laughs> it would be a great idea if <laughs> you leaned into this shit while it's the season that we're in. I know. No one makes pasta with soybeans. There is more to trap than Zayman. Yo, yo, tweet. Don't be one of those people, yo, yo. Don't, don't start naming the obscure shit. You you give me a you give me a, a song that's popping that's not a Zaytoven kit. Come on, let's do it. Give me name me one of those producers who are not using the Zaytoven shaker, chant, clap, or kick. Let's do it. They're even using his custom snare. It's, it's literally called like Beast Mode custom snare, and they're using that for snare rolls. Go ahead. Low Keed song, Nameless, it's in there. The Low Baby songs, it's in there. The Baby songs, it's in there. Gunna songs, it's in there. Um, the, if I'm not mistaken, the A Boogie with a Hoodie album has them on there. The Migo stuff, it's on there. The stuff that's not even 808 Mafia, it's on there. What are you talking about, Chief? Is more to trap than Zaytoven? Yeah, right. Not the trap that's making it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Trap is Gucci Man. And Gucci Man is Zaytoven. That's a package deal. What are we talking about? Why do people be trying me like I don't be listening to this stuff? I know it. Like, I know there's people who you struggle 808 kits. I know there's a lot of Reddit 808 kits. I am talking about the ones that are winning. Like, that's what I'm saying. Y'all gotta, you gotta change your governor and your, your engine when you listen to me. You hear what I said? I'm, I'm talking about up here. I'm not talking about down here on the damn internet. Y'all listen to Cody type beats. That's what's up. Them KBZ live streams got y'all fucked up. That's what it is. I know the Thick Mirror is using some other drum kit. That's cool. But I'm talking about the shit that's winning, bro. What are y'all talking about, man? <laughs> y'all so bumping lucid dreams. That's what it is. Even that had the damn Zaytoven 808 in it. The hell's wrong with y'all? <laughs> talking about this more than trap than Zaytoven. Damn it, it ain't for the past 10 years. Been saying this shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna speak on it. <laughs> you pass the inspection, damn it. <laughs> oh man. How many times you gonna be like here? Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's an every damn song. See, yo, shoot. <laughs> the baby made 30 different songs to the same beat 30 different times. Like, listen, I know. <laughs> Yeah, Zaytoven is the most influential, influential trap producer out of Atlanta for Atlanta, and it makes sense. They're all in the same family. It should be that way. It's the same way if you go to Puerto Rico and you're using a dembo loop from Shaba Ranks, but you represent it on the island. You know, it is what it is. Like, you know, Looney Tunes is going to do it, and the other boys are going to do it. The question is, who does it better? You feel me? Whether it's, you know, Hector L. Father or, you know, Yzine and Yandel, or, you know, whatever. They're all going to have a song that sounds exactly the damn same. But, you know, they don't all perform the same. They don't all have the same message. They don't all have the same words. They don't all feel the same. So, you know, I think we pay attention to little details that are not important. Um, and, and it's just this it's just this recent stream of energy, this recent stream of, I call it an era. Like, I joined second era. <laughs> like, you know, like BCE and shit in 80 that they have on calendars. Um, be selling beats online started a couple years before me. I think when I think I want to say the person who's claiming responsibility for selling beats online the first time, the first time when there's just web directories. I want to say it was 1998 to 1999 by the name of Gitalian. Gitalian wasn't a good beat maker, but he was the first beat maker to incorporate a real audio music player on a website and offer the ability to do commerce. And then sometime around that time, the YouTube boys and Elon Musk were fucking up with PayPal. And then they gave us PayPal, which allowed us to connect with mp3.com. That was around 2000, 2001. And then that kind of split off into SoundClick and the proliferation of dot-coms for teenagers, which I was included into that wave. So that was second wave. And then third wave, 2005. Another wave around 2010. That's where you get your superstar O's and Johnny Giuliano's. And then another wave right after Drake blew up. And so we're like in a fifth or sixth wave of eras of the way people do things and the way the music sounds. And I'm telling you through every fucking wave from back then, almost 20 years ago now, people are saying, nah, I'm not making that stuff with 808. <laughs> Can you imagine having the same conversation in 2001? Someone telling you, backing you, try to back you off the cliff of using 808s? 
Imagine how stupid those conversations were in the forums. I'm telling you, they're just as stupid now as they were then. So, people talking about that. People talking about they're never going to stop sampling. People talking about, you know, NPCs for life. And now these kids are asking me all the damn questions about Ableton. And then you got the people who are reason for life. And, and then I've seen all that shit. But one thing that didn't change, which is interesting about this story and drawing the arc to it, is that the, the, the proliferation of Southern music was always on a trajectory up when everything else was dying and going down. So for me, that's curious. Like, when is it going to die? I don't know. I don't even care no more. But the fact that it's always risen up, that it always transcended because of online culture, I, I just, I think it's uncivilized to dream, <laughs> to try to pass a different inspection, bro. Like, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to fight it no more. I'm done. Oh, Mike, what's good, bro? What's good, Cabri? Crazy, I'm only on 25. I've been dabbling beats throughout the eras. I used to not try to use 808s and only use bass guitars. I was asleep. I know. I know. I forgive you. Go back to listen to those 2,000 tracks. The drums are weak. No. You guys, you guys are going to make me mad. Uh, what kind of strike am I going to get for this? Hold on. I don't think I'll get a strike for this. I don't think these are registered. Who was doing this back then? Oh, my man, Atomic XL, 2004, right? I can't play it, bro. I'll play it real fast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna parse to it. You hear the sample? You hear that Shanti sample, or there's a sample, she sampled it too, but there's l legit another song, same sample, 808 kit on the radio right now. I, 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 it made, it made me throw up in my throat a little bit when I heard it, because it's like, Atomic XL made that track in 2003, 2004, and it's the same track, it's just different drums now, if you could hear just by that little preview of that, but it's, it's been going on forever, 808s on samples and all that shit, so I've had this and these folders for a long time. A lot of these producers. The producer for Bruno Mars and all those 8K Magic. Right? Raw Charm. I have some of his old stuff. Like, <laughs> like nah. These kids have been using 808s for a long time. Mozart's been using 808s for a long time, bro. Like, a long time. Like, nah. The, the South, half of these are South producers. If I'm, I'm F Major's my West Coast producer. He's up here. But yeah, all these are, are South Beats. Most of them, like camo from dusk from like sound, like all that many fresh strobe beats they're making now. He's been doing that forever. He still makes this beat. He's been making this same beat for 19 years. You know what I'm saying? Like that's old. This is old. This is older than a lot of y'all watching me right now. Same thing. Same breakdowns. Everything. Watch. He's about to do it. He wanted to work with Lil Wayne so bad. I'm waiting for it to break down so you can hear how Meg the Stallion does it. Hurry up. Still listening for those James Brown crashes. Yeah. Like, that's all the g Easy and all of them are breaking. Whatever. It's the same shit. It's been going on for years. It's been on my folder for years. Nothing's changed. Carter 2 type facts. But that was before the Carter came out. Stay woketh. I kind of missed the early South Wave. I really like those beats. Um, I'm, I'm saying like it's coming back. It is. It's coming back. You know, the city girls are on those kind of beats. Uh, the female artists are on the cash money master P type beats. The dudes, the kids with the dreads and the tattoos on their face, they're on the Zaytoven type beats. And Chris Brown and Drake go on any beat they want to. Tiger's on the flow rider beats. You can figure it out. Like it's easy. Like it's easy to see. Like 
apple bottom jean type beats. That's all Tiger stuff. You know, you, got, you can see it. Like, it's easy. It's, it's easy. The reason why DJ Khaled stuff didn't connect, because he didn't have none of that. How, how did DJ Khaled come out with a We The Best album without Drake? Like, that's why he flopped. I mean, that's why he's the second best. If you had Drake on it, he would have won. But that's not my business. No one executive produced me to be in that. But, you know, you see things for what they are after a while. Because you... <laughs> <laughs> the music is ingrained in the people who are listening, guys. Humans don't like change. And if your demographic that you're targeting with ads and commercials and lifestyle and social media and branding, if you develop the consumer from the age of 14, 10 years ago, and you have them from 14 to 25, and then you filter them till 34, so 25 to 34 is the next branch, right? So like Vibe and Johnny Giuliano, they're all approaching 30. So you have that whole wave of people in that age range. He has a great age range, 10 years both ways, and you still have an adult. Um, nothing changes for them because you have them in the habit of walking up to the checkout register and grabbing a pack of Starburst on the way out or, or walking past the freezer and grabbing a Sprite on the way out. Like they have people conditioned. Like because I told I made that stream before too and I was telling you like music is more about marketing than it is about how cute your fucking sounds are like it's it's a package deal it's a piece of a puzzle it's it's a piece of a bigger puzzle that we're not privy to know the inner workings of and it's not my expertise by any uh, stretch of the imagination but i have enough depth to understand the nuance that the reason why certain artists reappear or reincarnate through certain labels is because they're all part of the same agenda or same programming or the same demographic that they trained and that's the same thing like your doll companies are doing now. Like Ableton and all of them are reaching out, trying to figure out what the kids are doing. They're trying to figure out what the 12 to 14 year olds are doing. Why? Because their end game is now how they're going to get that group of people, which is much larger than us, who pay for software or who are indoctrinated with subscriptions and how they're going to keep these tools interesting and fresh for them. So all that shit about sampling and time stretching we've been wishing for up until now is dead now. Because unless these kids want it, we're never going to get it. So... Understanding that, well, they're playing the long con with 14-year-olds right now. So apps, touch stuff, things that are more visual and heptic feedback and wearables and all that shit. When all that goofy modular wire bullshit plug into your ear, I don't know. Like augmented reality sense, I don't know. Like once that shit gets popping, you know, th that's a long con. That's 10 to 20 more years of money they're going to make. And if they're doing a subscription model, some of these dolls are going to be billion-dollar dolls before we know it. So it's that is coming. And, and, and that looks different and the target and the kind of music they make with that and, and what is it for and how it's used and how they determine, you know, what they resonate with and the things that matter to them is going to have to appear in their artists and their songs. What I'm saying is we're at a gate, we're at a threshold of like the reason why nothing's changing here is because the program or the diet for our demographic has been exactly what it's been. And that's not going to change. That diet's not going to change. The gangster rap diet died. You, you know when it died. Nas told you when it died. When Nas made an album and said, hip-hop is dead, it died. And right after that, Ludacris came out. The end. <laughs> what is everyone confused about? You guys are celebrating Nas Lost Tapes and for, completely forgot he did that album. And everyone debated it, and he was right. So, until Gucci Man or someone says the South is dead, keep running. What are we talking about? And he says, a creative consultant, relax. <laughs> I'll tell y'all, listen to the shit that people like and make more of it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, like you guys ever study weed heads? I don't smoke, personally. I'm neurotic and I, I have paranoia, so I can't really smoke. I might be able to get down with CBD oil one of these days because I probably need it. But when you, when I perceive and watch people, how they act when they smoke, like... They don't go around like there's levels, right? There's like, oh, this is the new shit. This is from Cali. Whatever the fuck that doesn't even mean nothing no more. This is from Cali. Or this is that. Or this is Kush. Or this is Sour Diesel. Like they have all these different flavors, right? These tiers of things that they want, right? But at the end of the day, the thing that doesn't change is that it's still marijuana. <laughs> so if if you could categorize like if you could see that, like you could see the patterns of like 
how people might be able to hype up the different strains for a certain effect, although they're all getting stepped on mud from the sticks that someone's growing in their backyard. If you can understand that dynamic, it's almost like how they do with music. Like they say it's this new artist, this new thing, this new super producer, but it's all stepped on Kush. It's the same shit. It's, it's that homegrown shit they, they grow in the country. It's, it's not from Mexico, guys. No, it's not from Cali. It's, it's not making it to the East Coast. I'm sorry. It's, that's not what type of time we're on for, for the majority. But <laughs> you just, it, it's funny to me because I watch people debate and like spend 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 extra dollars just because it might be for, for the chance, for the, for, the, for the thrill of the fact that it may not be the stepped on homegrown stuff. And they find out two days later when they get that fucking migraine that it was spray painted with some bullshit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't ask me how I know. But yeah, so it's like, it's like that. That's what the Zaytoven kid is like. That's what that's what Electro is like. That's what Omnisphere is like. That's what your Fruity Loops is like. This is what your 808s are like. The, all these things, all these ingredients are the same shit. Like you, like you break it down and you put it back together. It builds the same thing over and over again. And, and I, I'm sorry that it doesn't sound like, you know, super duper sour diesel takes the edge off with no hangover or kickback. Nah, nah, fuck that. The sour diesel... It makes your whole vision turn sideways, and you're going to get extra hot for no reason in the middle of winter, and you're going to feel like sick if you don't smoke it again in two days. That's what you're doing right now. That's what this is. So what? You want to smoke with us, don't you? <laughs> Program's crazy. <laughs> Baby child rule. Uh, so it calls child You know I had to do it to you. You know I had to do it to you. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, the vape kills all the damn fibers in your lungs. They say smoking uh, takes the those little lung fibers you got and it and it it injures them. But vaping kills them forever. Stay woke. Mike Gow makes all his own sounds. Check him out. I don't want I don't want to listen to nobody who makes all their own sounds. I don't trust anybody who makes all their own sounds. It is true. I just I just read a whole thing about it. Uh, we got alternate facts out here in this in this universe. Mike Gow made an app for chords called Poly Playground. Oh, he's an app developer. He's a he's a thinker. But does he make good beats? Um I don't I don't know if I need a SSL six Emmanuel. Not yet. I don't. The Zulu is the Zulu and the preamp I got is kind of. <laughs> water vapor is absolutely safer than carcinogens. The carcinogens are in the liquids that you puff, though. Are you talking about water bongs? Are you talking about vape pens, bro? I'm talking about the effect of vape pens on research that they've done. It kills the fibers. I'm not talking about cancer. I'm just talking about the fibers of your lungs. And when you inhale that, those big puff clouds, it kills the fibers in your lungs. It's, not a conspiracy. Carcinogens, you can get that from just smoking mids, man. I don't, we ain't talking about that. You get you get carcinogens just standing outside under a chemtrail one day. You jump in the lake real quick and not, not eat enough fiber or something. We ain't worried about that. Original sounds, might as well get the Cody pack. Rebel Agenda gets it. You definitely get it. I love your new ones. Oh, man, not these questions. Not this bit we good for hip-hop. Bro, did you listen to the last 30 minutes that I've been talking about? You were asking us, is there a dog good for hip-hop producing? I failed. <laughs> I just failed. I failed inspection. Jesus. What did White Mike say? <laughs> Running on the board is two different beats. Most cats know about Manny Fresh could rock a board. Zaytoven couldn't rock on a board. But would he have to, though? I don't like those trophies either. Like, yo, I made a goat drum, and I recorded it straight to tape from Nazi Germany. Like, fuck, the fuck does it sound good? 
I don't care. Hey, like, <laughs> people will be like, yo, so I took my Triton, I turned it sideways, I took the cartridges out, I blew it two times, and I made the beat in the dark type beat. I'm like, ah, that's what's up. Okay. Does it sound good? Uh, <laughs> I kind of like the technicality. <laughs> no, does it sound good? <laughs> uh, I, I got to arrange it. <laughs> does it sound good? Uh, how much land it costs? <laughs> I don't know what people be talking about, bro. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I just don't. I lost the plot a long time ago. One of my brothers hit me up. Uh, he bought an NPC Live. He was like, yo, MG, you think you can walk me through how to chop on NPC Live? And I was like, no. <laughs> I didn't tell you to buy NPC Live. <laughs> Have you been watching my Serato videos? <laughs> like, you don't, <laughs> listen, you don't buy something like that. Just to ask me a question. Nah, bro. You got to do that in reverse. Like, ask me questions about it. Then decide if you want to buy it. Don't buy it. And be like, yo, MG, you're my tutor. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Why? Why? Why would you add that complexity to your setup for no reason when you don't have an i7 computer? I don't get it. I don't understand people. I just, none of my business. I'm sorry. I'm just from North Carolina. I don't know anything. I'm just saying, if you don't have an i7, the last fucking thing you need is a, another computer that's... No. Not for beginners. NPCs are not a beginner toy. It's not that kind of thing where you get to make cute little beats. So you can load in everything but the Zaytoven kid and make every beat but what's coming out. So you can sound like everything that's not right now. Just cut it out. No one cares. No one cares, bro. No one cares, bro. Like, no one. Like, bro, stop fucking asking. That's the problem. A lot of you guys ask producers for feedback, and that shit, that shit's low-key. There's levels to it, but at some point, the shit's got to stop. Stop asking other beat makers what they think about your beats. Because these damn it, these damn beat makers don't have you making beats for twist stuff if you keep it up. I need you to stop it. I need you to figure out who's rapping right now, who's buying, who's find out who's buying beats, who's rapping on beats, and then ask them what they think. So you can stop thinking that these old-school Manny Fresh beats are cool. They're, they're not as cool as you think they are. They're not. You know, No, Scarface is not making a comeback. It's, no, no. We, we, the outcast. Well, what? Oh, I love, I love that organized noise documentary. Man, if you don't shut the hell up. These were people who played instruments and had access to tools that was available to them, which was different than what was available to New York, which was different than what was available to California, which was different than what was available across seas. Um, so it, 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 by proxy and by default, it was very different indeed. I don't ever disagree with that. But everyone has Fruity Loops right now. That, you're not on that kind of time no more. You're not. Everyone has Fruity Loops. It changed everything. Like, you guys don't understand how stupendous the internet is. It changed everything. And what I mean by changed everything, it's not going back. Like, yeah, yeah, you used to ride horses and shit. But you got Escalades, bro. 20-inch rims on my Escalade, bro. You talking about, yo, should I get the caboose with the carriage with the two stallions? Goddamn. Y'all love Red Dead Redemption so much. You think we're going back to horses. It ain't happening. It's just, it's just why? Why would it go back to that? Why would it fracture off? Like you need like a World War Three or something. Y'all want, y'all want to make Stroke beat so bad that you'd rather have a World War Three so it can go back to that. That's crazy. Like in my mind is like, <laughs> people want the, the the United States to fracture so that they can go back to making struggle beats. Like nah, <laughs> there's there's other ways to, to get to this cake, bro. <laughs> Does it sound good? Did you pass inspection? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the internet did it to everything. It wasn't just us. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's for web design, for real estate, for graphics, for video editing, for the 3D, for everything. For manufacturing, for Amazon, for Walmart. Like, the internet changed everything forever. And, like, the alternate reality, the upside down that people want to live in is a world without the internet. And it's funny because they're saying that while they're on the internet. And I'm like, huh. Oh. I want 20s. 28s is ghetto. <laughs> they want an EMP to start over. What's good, K. Willis? Grump says, I ask people don't even listen to beats if it sounds good. Yeah. In my town, everyone who had 20s on anything paid 2000 for the rims and 200 on the car. Yeah. That's how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to rent your rims, by the way. Stay woke. It's too late. The difference between 1995 and 2005, that's the power of the internet. Yes, sir. Yep. You remember pay phones? I don't. <laughs> When's the last time you see a pay phone? When's the last time you dropped a quarter in a bitch? 
Kloop, kloop. Gring, 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 gring. Hello. <laughs> oh, shit. They ain't gonna answer. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Will image line ever catch up to the other dolls? MDM, relax. Rerun says I'm late. Not a dime. Dial up. Yeah. It's over, guys. It ain't going backwards. It is, the Renaissance will not be called hip hop. The Renaissance is not an effect of the sound of music. Remember, hip hop didn't rebel against funk and disco and house or none of that. Hip hop fused it. Hip hop took funk breaks and soul records and put it together. Hip hop wasn't this thing that was a counterculture musically, sonically. Um, hip hop was counterculture lifestyle in the streets of how people were treated. Like people were treated a certain way. People were isolated from certain things. People were a lot of have nots and they came together and they grew up and they partied and they laughed and they battled and they did all these things with the backdrop of their parents' records, right? So like hip hop was born in an era where the parents would have been listening to records from the 70s. So that makes sense for hip hop. When people say like the hip hop sound goes back to that is like, you're in your fourth generation from there. It's not. It can't. It's, it's incapable of because you're not listening to that music. Like, there's never a report coming out that, like, Luther Vandross went triple platinum. There's no reports coming out that you guys are buying, like, the Dells and the Delphonics and the Stylistics and the Impressions and the Dramatics and the Manhattans. Like, there's no reports of them going platinum because you guys are not consuming that kind of music. So it doesn't go back if you don't expose the future to that. So no, it, that's not how that works. It, it didn't work. For, that's not how hip hop made it work. Um, and plus, with the convergence of other cultures into our space, it's definitely not going there, bro. You better off s sampling Backstreet Boys and NSYNC before you go back that far. Y'all don't know what time it is. I keep telling y'all what time it is, and everyone keeps telling me about the other clock. Nah, it's okay. We're gonna see someone else making. We're gonna talk about that, and you're gonna ask me how to do that beat with another VSC that does 808s in 18 months. I'm with it. <laughs> Motown time strap. <laughs> Busy Work Speed says he wants to give away tickets for the June 30th event in NC. Hey, shout out to Busy Works Beats. Yeah, according to the Eventbrite, uh, the brother uh, Illicove, I call him Illicove, but you guys know him as Handsome Audio, Langston, Zulu. Um, the event will be Raleigh June 30th. I believe that is a Sunday from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. That is in T minus 14 days or so. We have quite a few people from the tribe and the community flying out to Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and I think Busy Works is saying he has 10 tickets he would like to give away if you guys are going to be in the area. Hip hop is robbed from rich, give to the poor. We stole the groove and repurposed them. Yep. Hip hop is just a tap tapestry of culture. Yes. Yes. That's the part that's missing. Hip hop does not have a culture in the current disposition. Atlanta culture is the closest thing that we have. Hence why it is the most prolific. It's not because of the sound, it's not because of the music, it's because of culture. Remember, music is a side effect, it's the backdrop of what's happening. Um, so you look at areas where things are happening and it's gonna have the loudest background noise. So like Miami, uh, Los Angeles, New York, Atlanta, Georgia, it's like four meccas. And, now Toronto with this big NBA win and Drake and these things, they might have a louder speaker too. And, you know, there's other shades and areas in between. I know one of the brothers conundrums, he's always big on like rubbing elbows locally and like making the sound hot locally where you are. And a lot of people like that take for granted of what they're asking for. It's like, okay, so you got to get everyone to gain agreement with you. You got to get everyone in your area on the same accord and you got to have people with money who want to pay and all these other things It goes, it's called infrastructure. You want to create an infrastructure for being broke and do this by all means, if you can do it, but you can't do that out of nowhere. Like not everyone's going to like you. You got to beat up some people and get shot at. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens that people leave out of these dreams of theirs. And I just, whatever, like, whatever. <sighs> trap is repurposed idiom. <laughs> Yikes. Current said he'll be in NYA. 
Yeah. <laughs> Where do you think the culture will shift to next? Uh, what kind of drugs is Big Pharma making next? <laughs> Are they disclosing aliens or not? Nah? Like, there's a lot of questions we got to answer. Figure out where culture is going to go. Most of the time, the local artists just want to sound like they're from somewhere else. Yes. Knife Wonder didn't necessarily start this wave. White might. I think, uh, but you proved my point, though. Knife Wonder, the reason why Knife Wonder is mentioned in that conversation is because he's the first one that we know of who had Fruity Loops with Jay-Z, a.k.a. something that mattered. Um, however, no, there's way more producers making sample hip-hop beats on Fruity Loops who had all kinds of songs online. That's what I was listening to. Like, it was cool when Knife Wonder came, but there's mad people who were nice. Like, I have all their files. Like, I, I, I say this all the time, but there's mad people nice for Fruity Loops way before we knew who Knife Wonder was. Um, what made Knife Wonder special was the Jay-Z collaboration. And that's the part that everyone wants to leave out. Because if he did not have that Jay-Z collaboration, would half of these people know who he was? And that's not a slight against talent or art or music. No, I'm just saying, like, people gravitate towards the light. Like, it doesn't matter how you get to the light. It's just, that's what people do. And then it was Hip Boy, right? Hip Boy was using a Fruity Loops user, and he did Niggas in Paris, and that was with Jay-Z. And everyone was like, oh, Hip Boy is the craziest. Like, Hip Boy was crazy on MySpace. What are y'all talking about? Um, Zayto, not Zayto, uh, Metro Boomin, Freddy Loops, uh, Murder on the Beat, Freddy Loops, Old Town Road, Fruity Loops, Nick Mira, Fruity Loops. Like, the Fruity Loops is only attached to the people who have big records with a lot of light. Like, if they're all Reason users, you'd be saying Reason. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, they're not Reason users. So <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, it, it, you could change the whole paradigm of your society just by who wins. And people control who win. It's a gate. It's really a gate. And it, it's I can't explain it. It's crazy. It, you'll see it in other fields before you see it in ours. Our, our field, we're the most delusional because we love it so much. We love what we do a little bit more than people who build or do other things. Because you have to love it to get good at it. But the, the, the business part, the success, the, light, the lightning bug part is a little bit different. It takes a little different kind of nuance. And <laughs> just sell us at the boondocks. <laughs> Did you go to Mood Fest? Why does Raleigh have so many cool events? Why does Raleigh get to do many cool events? So, uh, Moog Fest was the city over. It was in Durham. I went to a, a, a Moog Fest event for Streets, Streety Baby, the guy who I did that chat with from Controller Eyes. He was out there at the arcade doing a SP404 performance. A lot of cool brothers I met out there. Um, and that was part of the Moog Fest thing. And then we walked the streets for a little while before I head back to Raleigh. Merge 316 Hip Hop. Yeah, it changed my uh, opinion. No, when they would have been calling people Pro Tools users, some doll, your industry. Not on the internet, though, White Mike. The internet started, like, when, when it came to people selling beats and making money, it was always Fruity Loops. What you're talking about studio culture. You're talking about people who spent like $40,000 on a console and like they expect you to come in and have to track out everything. That was, that's even today still. Like st just people who don't know what Splice is in studios. The internet culture of people buying beats and selling beats and making dope ass music online was always Fruity Loops. Like it wasn't Knife Wonder. It was no disrespect to him. But I was there. <laughs> like I downloaded it. I looked on the forums and there's a whole Fruity Loops forum. With Fruity Loops people who were like, godly and people who are tracking out hardware in the Fruit Loops when you couldn't do that. Like using Cool Edit Pro and stuff and Rewire and why Rewire exists and the precursor to Cakewalk when it was DXI only. Like, nah. Knife Wonder doesn't get credit for that. Knife Wonder gets credit for someone who made hip-hop in Fruity Loops who had a record with Jay-Z. But it wasn't, he wasn't the only one making hip-hop. Yeah, the Pete Rock filter. Noah bar borrowed it from Pete Rock and we called it the Drake filter. Stay woke. Yeah. yeah. Knife Wonder was making Pete Rock type beats for a long time. He was on the lawn, like the Justice League for him. I remember. I remember in all I remember all the producers on there. They were on OK Player, the Justice League forum, and uh, undergroundhiphop.com from two thousand one to two thousand five. Oh, 
Oh, you're saying that when you came across it, it changed your opinion because you went to school for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was an entry for people who couldn't mess with Pro Tools. You couldn't get Pro Tools on our computers back then. Remember, we had six gigabyte hard drives and like 128 RAM. So like Pro Tools, you had to have the hardware component. So like, even if you could crack it, which we could, it didn't run because you didn't have the hardware. Um, same thing with Logic. Before Apple bought Logic, uh, Logic was kind of like that. We had Logic on PC, Cakewalk on PC. Uh, Q, all the Cubases were always on PC. Uh, fucking New Window, if you could. People used to treat New Window like it was godlike because it had a higher sample rate. But if you didn't have a real sound card, you couldn't do shit with it. So I went from a Sound Blaster, which allowed me to use Cool Edit Pro with no problems. Then I went to an Emu, which is a PCI slotted card. And you put that in, that's a 1212M. That's around the time they're doing the, the uh, they used to have little breakout cables and breakout boxes for your MIDI and your RCA and all that. And then that switched over when ASIO came out, and ASIO came out as a result of Fruity Loops, if I'm not mistaken. So, like, when the ASIO drivers came out, and, you know, you're able to change the latency and the response between your sound card and your computer, that changed everything. It was the hardware that computers were missing in the early 2000s. It wasn't necessarily the, the software. It was the hardware. The hardware was lagging ass. And then once the hardware caught up, you know, people start buying inboxes and stuff because, you know, people believe you needed Pro Tools to make a, a good sounding record. Um, I don't think any of the Fruity Loops kids believe that. And I think that's why Fruity Loops became so prolific because people always told us what you needed, what you should use, what the standard was. And the internet counterculture said, nah, fuck, y'all y'all got that. We got this. And, you know, when these kids are telling stories about how much money they need online, they're not lying. I was one of them. There's a really good window of opportunity where you can make your little pirated beats and make $50 a pop without blinking. And so many more people are rapping and there's so many more emails on the emailing list and there's so many more friends on the MySpace. Every, it was it was crazy, bro. I can't explain it to you, bro. Like I can I can send, I can get 50 emails off MySpace and just email five beats and I sell three of them by Monday. Like it was crazy, bro. Like and then no one would know. Like it wasn't like today where you watch producer grind and it's the same set of people it's like i can have my own niche i can just have colorado unlock can't do that no more <laughs> yeah acid pro was one of the ones that had time stretch first we used to try remixing it used to tap the tempo algorithm struggle man Here's a question from Luckfield. Why do you think Bruno Mars doesn't roll out new... What? <laughs> You're funny program. He says, do you think it's because people would get tired of the 90s swing music? <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you talking about? They, Bruno Mars will sit here and tell you, man, I listen to music to Jack. <laughs> He doesn't have a new project out, probably because he hasn't jacked any cool new music lately. Bruno Mars is just like me. Bruno Mars is like, I make stuff that I'm influenced by that sounds dope, and if I could play it and get away with it, I'd do it. The end. So why doesn't he have more content like that? It's probably because he's not inspired, you know? And the way that your deals are set up. You think that these art, these superstars control when their music comes out? They don't. It's part of an agenda. It's part of a bigger tree, but it's not part of the scope of this conversation. So Bruno Mars might make a run for it but we're, we're still reverse engineering something wrong you're, 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 what your question is is that um, if artists like Bruno Mars who are bringing 90s swing music or 90s R&B back do you think that they're putting a governor or limiter on it so that people don't get tired of it like you gotta ask that question different do people respond well to that when he did the Roger Troutman and all those brothers from the late 70s when he did that style of music on 24k like, did people respond well to that? Did white people like that kind of music? The answer is yes. White people love that kind of music. The question is, did black people like it? If the streets didn't like it, then it's not going to live again. Because the streets has to, it's weird. It's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to intellectualize until you've experienced it. But it's not about, for, for superstars, they could they could, he could have did an Adele album and people would still love him. He'd still get the same amount of Grammys. He'd still get the same kind of recognition. He'd be such, still a great artist. I don't think it's happening that way. Hip hop is the only one that's trying to bring something back. They're not trying to bring nothing back. They're running out of inspiration. So it's like, 
Everyone's doing this. We're going to do that. <clears throat> and you notice that when you do it that way, and you say hip-hop is coming back, then every, if hip-hop comes back, they're all going to do the same records. So it runs into the same problem that hip-hop already ran into that gave birth to Trap anyway. So you're just going to put yourself back in this position. It's crazy talk. It's it, It'll get confusing if you let it. Yeah, the hardware was expensive. Even inboxes were expensive. I know you had to drop a grand or better just to get Pro Tools working on a cheap computer. Ain't nobody had time for that. Except for the rappers. And that's why they could afford beats. <laughs> and Joe Meek preamps. I remember that. Everyone had a green Joe Meek preamp. Been listening during the night shift. Thanks for entertainment. Kyle, what's good, bro? AZO for all. Hey. The new producers' first beats were made on the PS2 on their console. Facts. Like a video game. Just like they're about to do with the new Ableton stuff. Free Loops was the platinum of Cracks Alone. Yes. Undisputed. Probably second place to Koi Pro. Those commercial acts take their time. You're talking about millions off of tracks. Yeah. Gems in the building. We are the new history. Yeah, Adam. Yeah. The internet YouTube era is going to be the next pivot. So if you want to know what's going to happen, watch the kind of music that's being made in tutorials. And that's what's going to happen. That's where the influence is coming from. So if you want like people to make... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> you guys haven't noticed that a lot of the music come out sounds like tutorials. Oh boy, even the hip hop stuff, they ain't slick. Y'all didn't hear that 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 track on Schoolboy Q's album with the lo-fi piano in the beginning and had the little tag "The Future, The Future." Y'all not paying attention to this? I am. What do you think they're doing? Where do you think they got that from? So. I would say the future of music is probably going to go in the direction I do my damn tutorials. Because <laughs> it has been for the past couple of years. It seems that way. <laughs> you ever see all them head asses with Serato Sample and those breakdowns? <laughs> if you want to know what's next, subscribe. <laughs> For now, we're bringing out the Zaytoven kit for a few more months, damn it. We'll get my shit off. <laughs> Empty the past. <laughs> yeah, but these bros out here. <laughs> oh my god, this RX 950 is really lit. <laughs> oh man, this RC20 sounded really good on my guitar, you know. And I had my friend, he played the guitar, and then he put RC20 on it, and I went into Omnisphere and got some textures. <laughs> I was like, oh, that sounds like an MG tutorial 20 times over. Jesus Christ. And people were like, oh, man, that, that's hot. You know, I love the way J. Cole is doing it right now. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you also love Machine Master tutorials. Stay woke. That's why you love it so much, because you've seen it already. You've seen it before it happened. And then it happened. And no one pays attention to that, because, you know, MG is just a YouTuber. So stay woke. I don't care. <sighs> that personality context you had is the future. It's all going about selling your personality. White Mike. Tutorial level type beats coming. <laughs> uh, you see how many people are crying because their beats got stolen recently? Have y'all not noticed that? Did y'all see the Young Chop interview when they directly asked him the DJ Cast question about vibes and Young Chop? Like, that's based on a true story, guys. Music production has been commercialized. Oh, uh, yeah. Look how many dogs you got. Anytime you have more than one tool to make the same doghouse, it's it's a fad, bro. Music production is very chic. You see how many apps you got? You got Cubase on your iPad, fam. You guys are worried about the wrong thing. It ain't going backwards. It's a beautiful thing. You can make beats on Fortnite now. Come on now. You make bangers on Fortnite. Relax. Lo-fi was underground till you came around. I think so. I just help amplify it. But, but my brothers, I always give, I always give credence to my brother, Pro Professor Logic. If it wasn't for Professor Logic from New York, but relocated to South Carolina, if it wasn't for him and that brother posting his SP303 videos and his Ableton videos on Instagram, I would have ignored it um, largely. But I loved and resonated so much with what he was doing with the sound, and it reminded me of when I started and had me question myself of why I stopped. And then he in a way vicariously passed that torch on and I had to get on my Googles and 
bring it forward. And then last year was just such a blessing with how many lo-fi plugins came out. Um, and even if you look at the NAMM stuff and you look at how much of the presentations were lo-fi in nature or lo-fi edits on their videos, like that's undeniable. It's undeniable that it hit critical mass. Um, and, and even the sample packs you see getting uploaded to Splice and Sounds, lo-fi this, lo-fi that. Come on now. Like, come on. I know what time it is. You know, I remember when I did that video. Someone mentioned it earlier, Lo-Fi Christmas. You know, I predicted it then. And that was two, two or three Chris, Chris, Christmases ago. So um, it is what it is. And because I, I've experienced that now, I've experienced being able to be an obscure YouTube channel and um, say things and predict things and, and teach things and watch it become bigger. So I definitely believe in what I'm saying because it's happened already, you know? Yeah, Fortnite has a music maker in their free one of their modes. You bring you push down certain blocks that make sounds. <laughs> I told you it's not the texture. Yeah, the textures, bro. Definitely the textures. Just go into Omnisphere and search texture. <laughs> you can get all your, your hook layers. Shout out to the brothers in Toronto who who made that a thing. Yeah, man. I'm just talking shit. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It'll, it'll happen again. Hopefully I'm part of it next time. 112 watching. Any other questions? Comments, questions, concerns? Anything? Ch -ch 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 -ch. Nah. Nan. Nand. Negative. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, all right. <laughs> I just want to see if this shit still work. I got off my copyright strike. So forget them boys in Germany. They try to hold a real one down, but they can't. Make sure you follow MG The Future on Twitch. I like how they blocked this comment from saying follow me on Twitch. That's hilarious. It's twitch.tv forward slash MG The Future. Also, the link to the Discord is going to be in the description of the video. That's where we be at. Y'all talk about it's been a long time. Uh, y'all ain't been trying to follow, so I don't want to hear that from y'all who say that. But uh, from everybody else, I appreciate your time. Appreciate your support. Appreciate your patience with me ranting like I do on this beautiful Sunday. I pray that you guys have a blessed week. Like I said, if you're trying to do your own thing, don't listen to me. I'm just one opinion of a many. Um, but if you're trying to get some Skrilla and stay Rilla and Trilla, yo, stop, stop procrastinating. Get, get this shit done. Just stop making it a chore. Like, do it. Do it. You know what to do. Um, and if you don't know what to do, stick around. That's what, I, that's what I'm about. Hey, how to master. I dragged and dropped the lander. Stay woke. <laughs> how do you use scaler? <laughs> drag and drop presets. What are you talking about, guys? Stop trolling. Peace, 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 peace. So that's it, kids. So I'm splicing. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I've had enough. <laughs>